Hey everybody, hey Facebook, uh, this is The Wrap and we're excited because we're going to be bringing you guys all of this week's trending topics because it has been a very wild week, right? Uh, we have here with us our gum contributor, Miss Aya Rhodes. Hey, how are you? Hey, Shade. We're excited. Good to be back. Absolutely. It's late <laughs> and uh, I wouldn't say we're tired. We're not tired at all. We're just... Of course not. The night is just beginning. It is. <laughs> I remember back in the day, I'd be leaving out my I house know. this time. Remember that? I know. Crazy. So this now week, I need a nap yeah. first. I know, right? That's a good. That's a good point. <laughs> this week has been very interesting. Um, a couple of things I know that we wanted to, to touch base on mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. is, and I'm gonna load this up, guys, and we want to hear from you as well. So we'll be able to uh, see your questions and answer them in in, uh, in uh, real time, and. Uh, what do you think about the Shea Moisture thing? It's been, you know, first of all, let's break it down. Mm -hmm. Let's break it down because Shea Moisture is a product line that is, I mean, you know, let's be real. It is a uh, line for natural hair, uh, women of color. Mm -hmm. It's a natural hair care line uh -huh. started by um, a black man, uh -huh. right? Okay. CEO is a black guy. And recently he, in an attempt to broaden his appeal mm -hmm. to other um, to other cultures, he um, recently produced a commercial. Or the company recently produced mm -hmm. a commercial, and they used, um, you know, they use women. They use, they did use yeah. a woman of color, yeah, but they definitely included white women. Sure, um, and their original customer base took offense. Right, and you know what though? Um, when I break it all the way down, first of all. Um, just to give this some context when, and I think it's important that we give it context because mm -hmm. there were so many varying opinions. And listen, I think that everybody's opinion, I mean, it's, it's valid. It's, Absolutely. It's certainly important. Um, but I think it's kind of important to understand uh, it's, it's context. And so for me, when I thought about it, number one, historically, uh, products for African-American hair um, was scarce. Absolutely. And, you know, many manufacturers right. initially did mm -hmm. not think enough to produce products, products that would though, work. That would work, exactly. <laughs> Which is why, you know, there was uh, lots of uh, entrepreneurs. Mm -hmm. that we could, you know, think about Madam C.J. Walker and, I mean, and a whole host of others, Absolutely. you know, but she's the first person that comes to mind. And uh, Madam C.J. Walker was uh, an entrepreneur in the 1800s, and she uh, created um, hair products. Mm -hmm. um, Lots of folks think that she was the originator of the pressing comb, straightening comb. Well, she was not, but she certainly took it to another level. She Absolutely. created hair products. Right. And in fact, I believe she was the uh, first American millionaire uh, in our country. So um, American or black? Millionaire? American woman millionaire. Okay. Woman I believe woman okay. woman millionaire. I okay. believe so. Absolutely. Um, so you have that, and I'm gonna fast forward real fast mm -hmm. into um, certainly recent times, kind of before the natural hair craze. Um, you know, took a blaze, but you know, the black hair care business is a billion dollar industry. Absolutely. And we go on and on talking about we spend like a the lot of class of money it's a billion on dollar industry. our hair. Absolutely. I mean, all of us, not all of us, but many of us are mm -hmm. product junkies. Mm -hmm. We have this for this day, this for when we want to wear our hair that way. Absolutely. Um, yeah, it's a, it's a very lucrative industry. And very so billion dollars. You understand wanting to be down. Mm -hmm. <laughs> right. Absolutely. And so, you know, you have a lot of marketers, um, black owned, uh, some, but I mean, lots of these uh, manufacturers are conglomerates. Mm -hmm. They're part of major corporations um, with different divisions. Right. So you know, dark and lovely might be a part Carson's of Carson's or right exactly. You know, and so right. they're not Captain Gamble, mm -hmm. any mm -hmm. of those. Right. You know. So let's just kind of think of that for a second. So in terms of empowerment, and you know, when I think about any product line, I'm always curious to know what its practices are. Obviously, making sure that, and this is important, guys. I'm going somewhere with this. You know, making sure that they don't test on animals right. and that they have fair trade practices. I mean, all these kinds of things, you know, mm -hmm. certainly like in today's time. All right. Boom. Um, and of course, the proliferation of like YouTube videos and that, uh, you know, natural releases and people that really taught us how to use how the to really, product. Absolutely. In our hair. How to you know, use I've the heard products. many women say, wow, I didn't know I had curly hair or uh, nice graded hair. 
before it went natural because why? We were frying, dying, and laying to the side of our hair, right? right. I remember every four weeks, a lot of chemicals. Remember that? Absolutely. You felt a grain. Yeah. It was time for a relaxer. And remember that? were puffy a little bit. Oh, it was time. Those edges didn't lay. That's right. It was time for a relaxer. Yeah. And it's kind of what we did. And so there was a resurgence uh, in natural hair. And I think for the first time in a long time, I mean, certainly in the 70s with this afros, say it loud, I'm black and I'm proud, all of that. But then you had the 80s and the and jerry again, curls and the perms. And right. we kind of went back into that. Mm -hmm. All right, fine. And again, I think there's beauty and diversity. I'd say do whatever works for you, quite honestly. Mm -hmm. um, the reason why I went natural because I began to be allergic to relaxers. That the, A similar thing happened to me is... Um, I was getting relaxers, and they just were irritating my scalp so bad, so bad. And then I found they weren't really straightening my hair anymore. Interesting. Right. So it was irritating my scalp. Wow. And it wasn't. I didn't feel like it was super effective, so I just absolutely. And my hair really, when I began to grow it out, never straightened. I mean, it would straighten. Like I would have to leave it in for so long that it was counterproductive. I mean, right. You know, and I mean, in general, a relaxer people is a. Uh, you know, for those who don't know, a uh, relaxer is just that. It relaxes uh, kinky or curly hair. <laughs> you better go pause. <laughs> Guys, tape it back on, buddy. <laughs> who was that? That was my amazing son. But look, like, yeah. has he talked to you all night? He hasn't talked to you all night, you know right? He has. Oh, Here's okay. The thing. You know, the baby always you know, has no, does not care to have a concept of what it means when mommy's working. Working. Yeah. He thinks mommy's he's at work. He's okay, but you're work. working in, fact, he's, in my space, though. In fact, though, he's famous on Periscope. Oh, okay. He is the uh, hugs ambassador because he always comes and joins. As soon as you go live, he's like, oh, can yeah, I give you a hug? <laughs> yeah, and he comes in. People ask about the hugs uh, ambassador. So, yeah, that was the hug oh. ambassador. That was his audio entry. Um, but, and so you have, some people were not able to get relaxers mm. because of that reason. I mean, I built up an allergy because of the overuse. Over time. Yeah. You know, et cetera. So then, of course, we're looking for products I'm that. i for my allergy, though. Because really? Because I sometimes look at some of my, you know, some of our seasoned mm -hmm. senior sisters, mm -hmm. and I'm like, Okay, this is where we're headed. If we you're right about to that. use those relaxers, you are so, so right about that. I'm happy to give them up. The uh, thinning, yes, the alopecia. Yep, exactly. So very, very true. I'm happy to give it up. Very true, very true. And then and maybe have our options. Yeah. So you know all this, and here's the thing: it's a journey. The natural hair uh, journey is a journey indeed, because mm -hmm. I think that this is a crazy thing, guys. And uh, no matter what uh, race or nationality are you are. Hair for women in general is something very personal. Yeah. And our products are something very personal. Mm -hmm. And so I think that when you think about like relaxers, excuse mm -hmm. me, like natural hair, finding something that works for you becomes a, a relationship. Deal. It's a very big it's deal. It's a big deal. I mean, I think many of us, we rely on products. Mm -hmm. If you had, if you found a product eight years ago right. that works for your hair, you probably still buy that product. You're right. And if they change the formula, you how mad it. are you? Absolutely. Right. Oh, you're going to write in. <laughs> yes. You're going to write in. Yeah, so you're our hair is, is a very, very, per like you said, it's a very personal thing. And Absolutely. When we, finding products that work is hard. Right. And when we do find products right. that work, we stick with them. Absolutely. And that that's probably what makes it such a lucrative business is right. that we are loyal to a brand. Absolutely. Once we find a brand that works. And especially if you feel a brand understands who you are uh, right. and what your needs are. And then when you think about uh, a demographic of people that are that were and still may be marginalized in some way um that's something unique and who are loyal who spend lots of money and who you know if you're in a billion dollar industry so you have these factors at play and then in terms of the advertising you they feel your core demographic may feel like they are being replaced it's like say you're almost kind of ignoring the fact that i am i mean i core. think that was exactly part was, of the backlash yeah. for right. For Shea Moisture um, is that as people with kinkier textures, right? So not your and you know about hair typing Absolutely. in the natural community, right? You have the three, uh -huh. the four, A, B, and C. Mm -hmm. um, four B and four C felt like they didn't see their hair in that commercial. Absolutely, and they saw women who were more fair skinned, mm -hmm. even when there was some. Even the the young lady who was the woman of color 
she was a she was lighter, mm -hmm. right? And so it's like, okay, well, you built your brand on Absolutely. our backs, for lack of a better word, right. and now you get to go national, and I don't see myself in this Absolutely. commercial. Which and it's a part of a larger strategy, but people will do that. They'll go through the black community and then abandon the and black that's... community in place of growing their brand. Right. You can grow, but you should not and replace. I'm, and no one is opposed you to you growing your brand, Absolutely. right? Like, that's how mom and pop um, shops become conglomerates. Mm -hmm. No one's mad at that, right? Absolutely. But certainly you cannot leave your ride or no. die chicks that were no. there with you on day one. It's not smart and it's not economical. It's not smart. But what I am happy about mm -hmm. is that they were receptive to the oh feedback. Oh my gosh. Within like 24 to 48 hours. They were super I receptive to the feedback. Super receptive. So, you know, that's not a brand that I'm going to kick to the curb. Oh, no, no, no. I think, and I think we do that too often sometimes, so fast. Yeah, we, well, we threaten to. I don't know if we always do. Okay. But but I think the power of our voice, yeah. we have to start to embrace that. Absolutely. Whether, you know, sometimes, you know, maybe we are unforgiving, but I think that companies need to be that much more, they need to be super careful. Mm -hmm. If they think we're going to overreact and not spend our money with them, okay. they, maybe they will think twice about what they produce. Absolutely. And we also have to realize our the importance of our dollar as well. Absolutely. And, you know, I and, think, yeah. I think with Shea Moisture... Mm -hmm is probably struggling with is again when you are a smaller entity and you're creating this product in your kitchen and I know he's not he wasn't creating sure. it in his kitchen but he had probably a a smaller deal in terms of getting his product manufactured and now he's with a bigger brand try to retain as much creative oh my control gosh. retention as and relationship. possible you're right it, there you go because when you something. go to the big brand and then they stick you with People who don't look like you to market your product. And understand the <laughs> unique needs of your core customer base. That's how you end up with a commercial that Absolutely. doesn't reflect your core I base. thought it was a skit. I didn't even know that it was real. <laughs> because here's the thing. Uh, Pantene put a commercial out during uh, Black History Month. And it was beautiful. Mm -hmm. Very beautiful. I mean, it was shot well. Mm -hmm. It was great cinematography. I thought the models were very diverse. It was mm -hmm. beautiful. I mean, mm -hmm. the lighting was just amazing. And, uh, you know, uh, and so they kind of put it out again. Mm -hmm. People say, oh, look at this. They're throwing shade and shade moisture because they have this ad. But the commercial has already been produced. Yeah. And it was beautiful. In fact, uh, I saw it. Um, Nicole, I want to say Brown, um, she, you know, perhaps they were had like, uh, like partners or uh, sponsors or what have you. Anyway, mm -hmm. so she shared it. Mm -hmm. um, she's an actress and what have you. And anyway, um, I saw it and it was just beautiful. And I mm -hmm. said, wow, this is, it, it was, you know, something that we call in marketing, um, aspirational marketing. Yeah. You mm -hmm. know, mm -hmm. and so you I see want that. my hair to achieve oh this. Oh my gosh, this absolutely. Is, I could completely see myself using totally. this product to achieve this outcome. Absolutely. Yeah. And it made me want to go grab that Pantene product. And see, I, you know what I mean? And Pantene is not a black owned, black owned company, but they seem to have gotten their oh, marketing on it point. So I, I really want to see Shea right. Moisture recover. Sure. Um, and not suffer over the long term for this. But I think a number of people went to LinkedIn mm. <laughs> to look to see who works at Shea Moisture. And right. they came up and started showing images of the people who were brand strategists for Shea right. Moisture. And that right there was, I said, oh, that's where you messed up. Right. I don't know when the brands will start to remember. You can't create messaging for black people or for right. people of color without having people of color at weigh the in. There's a, at there's the a table. Saying, we shouldn't have to keep asking totally. for a seat at the table when you right. keep messing up. There's a saying that if you're not at the table, you're on the menu. Okay. Okay. I see what you're saying. And, um, and I think that's so true. And here's the thing. Um, no matter if you're talking about... Uh, ethnic hair care. Mm -hmm. um, I give my husband this um, analogy. Imagine the Afro pick, mm -hmm. the iconic Afro pick, right? Mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, obviously men of color have been using it to pick out their Afros. Mm -hmm. And it was almost kind of a rites of passage that you have this Afro pick, perhaps they've been handed down, or you go to the drugstore and buy a new one, right. or whatever. Uh, then, let's say that you see a commercial. Mm -hmm. And in a commercial, it's Brett Favre. And he's using it. And, and the like, brother's not in the commercial. It's a you huge think it's disconnect. I'm not mad. Hey, Brett Bob, get your pick. Right. Do you. But it's a but disconnect. But you're like, wait a minute, where are the other guys right. who have been customers of this Afro pick? Where mm -hmm. are they at? Mm -hmm. And so it's almost like a slap in the face. Mm -hmm. And if you look at the broader context of uh, positive images of African-American women, women of color, in the media, you don't see it. 
You know, so if it's a matter of uh, a reporter interviewing a woman, it's going to be the woman with the gold teeth and the rollers in the hair. Oh, Shout out to the women. Right. Stereotypes, right. I'm not oh, mad at the gold teeth, by the way, guys. Shout Shit. out to the gold teeth. Get I'm not mad at you. Okay. <laughs> Do you. But what I'm saying is the rollers, the robe. And I'm like, there's a position. Well, right. that's Talk where media is, is reiterating or right. reinforcing negative stereotypes and right. basically minimizing absolutely things that make us that that position us in a positive light. Right. Yeah. So you have that as a broader context. Mm -hmm. So then you have something like a Shea Moisture and you see yourself deleted out. Yeah. You feel some kind of way about it. So I yeah. think that when you look at the broader context, and so there was an outrage. And I think what got on my nerves is that people who uh, shamed the folks who were outraged. Like, let the people process it. I mean, I, I don't know if people were saying, why, why do we yeah. have such this need to police each other's right. feelings in our community? But I don't need you to tell me that I'm taking over, you know, that I'm taking it overboard. I'm overreacting to exactly. this. Exactly. Um, maybe I'm not. And they seem to be responsive and understood Absolutely. where the disconnect was. I don't think that we have to sit back and let things happen to us and, and be victims. Absolutely. Right. I'm spending my money. Spend I can money. certainly express money. my opinion. Here comes payday, and you're going to spend a quite significant amount and, to make sure your hair looks and nice. And I thought it's not cheap. They are not inexpensive. So, Absolutely. please, if you collect my check, you can hear what I have to say as well. I agree. And they were very responsive, and I think I, I really appreciated that. Mm -hmm. And um, what was interesting is that not only were they responsive, they were um, like, they totally fell on the sword. Yeah. Uh, didn't they? Yeah. I mean, they they use some very colorful language they did. to say, "Oh, we messed up," and you know, I could I can appreciate and I respect the um, you know how quickly they responded and how they did not try to justify it. Right? They just said, "Yeah, we messed up." Absolutely, and I, I we I get really it. Appreciated that. Yep, I did. Yep. and um, you know, and I think that in terms of looking at who the um, marketing and advertising agencies are, because there's so many. Talented, bright. Who did they smart, sell to? Who are they affiliated uh, with now? You know what? In terms of the agency, no. I feel like Shea Moisture has been sold. Right, it's no longer that guy who was the sole owner. I think right. he sold to I a think larger part, part owner or something. Yeah, like that. he has some. Affiliation. He still has some control, but right. I think that he mostly is now being distributed. I mean, obviously to have national distribution. Oh, totally. He has a. He has a probably make some moves, and right. I understand that. I just don't. I don't remember what company. Um, he's associated with now. Um, right. Well, I know that it's a Sundial brand now. Sundial. Yeah, yeah Sundial. exactly. Mm -hmm. Exactly. Um, so hopefully Sundial, you know, um, shout out to you for being responsive and totally falling on the sword. Not only that, but I saw a new ad that they produced and it was beautiful. It was beautiful. I didn't see it. Yeah, it was yeah. really, it was really okay. beautiful. So I'm going to check gonna, it out. I'm going to put a link guys in the um, comment section of this video so you guys can see the new updated Shea Moisture ad because it's really nice. It's okay, authentic. I have to check that out. Yeah, it's really nice. Um, you know, I think brands, um, you know, brands are always learning their lesson. I mean, we could talk about Pepsi. We don't even have time to talk about Pepsi. They've already, you know. But see, okay, that? for a moment, can we, we just say Pepsi? not talk about Pepsi, uh -huh. but just say that you know when Pepsi dropped the ball, everybody yeah. with a commercial in the queue should have said, "Oh, make sure that's not us." Like, can we get a check? <laughs> I need to send him a checklist. Right. Yeah. Send him a checklist. Listen, please. After don't do Pepsi this. dropped the ball, how did you look at right. your commercial and say, "Oh, we not doing"? You know, we didn't mess up like that. Absolutely. No, you you did mess up. So, sure um, I, I I was slightly disappointed that that even had to happen following a Pepsi. You're right. That <laughs> Pepsi ad, uh, was a monstrosity. It was patronizing. I mean, and and Kendall Jenner. Exactly. That's where they went wrong first, was that it was you know, Kendall Jenner. And I'm not even mad at Kendall Jenner. I just think that she, I just think I mean, she, she signed on was way in it was over a dollar her head. For her. It True, was a contract. She was way in over her head. Absolutely. Where? Yeah. She was way in over her head She was way in over her head. And I think that when things like that are being re represented on mm -hmm. television, it's best to use people who that's already their lifestyle. You're right. Right? Like so Pepsi was trying, <laughs> you're not an trying to a little bit because see I've been not seen you do anything totally in terms of no, activism. Not even at a all. post. Right. And that's kind of insulting. Exactly. And we can go all day long about appropriation. Right. Okay? Exactly. But for her I think why it was a little disturbing and um is because she doesn't normally talk about these kinds of issues. So mm -hmm. I don't know what made her 
be the choice, if you will. It was almost like, well, we're going to have this. We're going to have a little of well, that. I understand we're gonna how they selected her, right? Well, because, because they were yeah, going with the, the modeling angle. But they True. were going with the modeling angle, sure. right? And well, they like wanted Chrissy to... Chrissy Teigen, um, John Legend's wife. I mean, yeah. she's very much active and uh, she's, like, vocal. she's aware. Totally. Mm -hmm. She's woke. <laughs> Somebody had a post on Facebook. It was so funny. This is a side note. Um, gosh, after the unfortunate incident that happened on Facebook with the uh, shooting mm -hmm. of the In Ohio. Man. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And so um, there's all these foolish conspiracy theories that were going around. It was just <laughs> disgusting, quite frankly. And uh, somebody said, all you old people who are woke need to take a nap. <laughs> oh, no. And I thought it was so funny and appropriate <laughs> that day yeah. for all the nonsense that was going on that day and that you know what was being said about um, the... the that whole scenario, that situation. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, but hopefully, you know, Pepsi's response, um, I thought, was fitting for them. It was fitting. It like was they need to really do their homework. Yeah. Like, but also not fitting. try to trivialize the matters that Absolutely. actually, you know, that drive us to mm -hmm. those to those um, marches and to right. those rallies, right? It's not really, I think that it's it's kind of insincere as a brand to want to kind of make a dollar off of the oh, fact that is. we even have to be out there marching, right? So true, so true. I think Dr. King's daughter said it best. Oh, if only daddy had a Pepsi. Exactly. Right? So, like, you're making light or trying to make a dollar Absolutely. off of what are very serious issues and that require know, us to be out there sure. to march in the first What's place. What's their giving? What's their corporate policies on diversity, on on discrimination? And I want to know all of that. Exactly. Sure that message is even set well and I within the context of I how they do business. I would venture to bet that in a real scenario, mm -hmm. they would want they would not want their brand to be front and center in a real scenario. Interesting. Interesting. Because if you think wow. about it, even even in terms of my, my the corporate culture mm -hmm. that I'm a part of, they don't want their their brand their label stamped gotcha. up on. You know, so things like that could BLM, be BLM. Like, yeah. And then you know, and the company. Gotcha. Yeah. They okay. want that to be completely separate because gotcha. there's somebody that's a buyer that would sure. be offended by that, right? Sure. So let's not let's not let our personal opinions be linked right. to the brand. That's how my company sure. I think feels about it and other organizations that I'm a part of. Oh, absolutely. So mm -hmm. I think that to again to try to um, you know, make a dollar off of what are very real scenarios. That's that's insincere. I don't you drink know, soda anyway, so right. I don't have to stop drinking Pepsi. But <laughs> I know, same here. but if that's I did thing. drink pe soda, right. I wouldn't be drinking Pepsi. Wow, yeah. I just think that um, you know, it's it was like protest slash love fest. Yes. Slash, what was it? And it was very it was a naive. Yeah, it was super it naive. Was so I don't naive. know who the person is. And that, the production on that thing yeah, had they to be spent a lot super, of money. Oh my gosh, had to. And you ran it one time, and I mean, you won't make with, nothing from it. Yep, had to pull it. Uh, there was an ad probably 30, 40 years ago. I don't know if it was Pepsi or Coke, but mm -hmm. where the protester handed uh, the other person across the other side a soft drink, and someone said, "Well, no, 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 it was just kind of paying homage to that." But even that was trivializing the protest at that time. So yeah. I'm like. Not, no, no, it's just it. a good idea to leave it alone. Leave it alone. Leave it alone. Leave it alone. Right. So we, we digressed and talked about Pepsi, even though yes. we said we wouldn't. Yes, we did. But good discussion. It was. So next on the docket, uh, I'm not sure when the young lady that was, uh, that as soon as it was uh, the University of Mary Washington. Mary Washington. In Fredericksburg. In Fredericksburg. Mm -hmm. um, can you set it up? Sure. So uh, she sued. Is it University of Mary Washington or Mary Washington University? Mm -hmm. She is a student athlete who plays basketball. She was doing some pre tryout workouts mm -hmm. with the with the team mm -hmm. or with some other girls who were going to be trying out for the team, and they um, seemed to consistently be making jokes, racist jokes, mm -hmm. or or jokes that were um, if they weren't wholly racist, they were insensitive, mm -hmm. right? Um, and from a racial perspective, they were making jokes and, um, when she commented back to them or kind of pushed back on those young ladies in terms of the, those jokes being offensive, um, they took, they took it some kind of way. They got in their feelings about it and the coach then approached her and said, Hey, I don't think you're vibing well with the team. You're not going to be able to play with the team. Mm -hmm. Um, and so she 
with the encouragement of her mother, who also had uh, previously filed a lawsuit based on race discrimination as well. So her mom was, you know, her mom is was woke. Mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. With the encouragement of her parents, mm -hmm. um, went back and sued the school. And the school didn't admit anything that no. they did anything wrong. They settled for some. They all. settled, mm -hmm. but it was a foreign. It wasn't for a lot. Like no. it will basically cover her education. Oh my gosh, honey, who are your attorneys? Uh, I mean, I guess. I, yeah, I don't 100 know. One hundred and sixty thousand dollars. Yeah, not having to admit any wrongdoing. Plus, she's not able to disparage. The university at all. She can talk about what happened, but she can't add her opinion or say, you know, X, Y, and Z. And I think that um, for $160,000, they would have had to pay me more to keep my oh, mouth shut. Oh, But, and also, here's the thing. How about any potential book deals or speaking engagements? And first of all, this, let me go. It's not about money, first of all. And number one, I think that that amount right. is not punitive enough. And especially because they didn't have to admit to any wrongdoing. I think that even that with about? it not being punitive, what I think is most disheartening to me, right? Because the school has 160000 Nothing, right? But for those girls to walk away, the girls who were the perpetrators to walk away and not have any type of repercussions, to not feel any repercussions, Absolutely. I think is the bigger issue. Wow. Because Major. this is actually... They're learning from anything about it, you're saying. Exactly. Gotcha. They're not learning anything from it. Right. And quite honestly, this is exactly what we're battling. That's a microcosm, right? That's a small situation, but that's exactly what we're battling. Absolutely. Um, at a macro level right now in our communities is that um, people are able in this in this Trump era, mm -hmm. able to kind of be expressive and to tell you how they really feel without sure. any repercussions. And I think that, you know, it's not going to get better. Right. It, it's not getting better. Um, and I think that that's what I, one of the th key things that I took away from that is that those girls learn nothing. Absolutely. They learn nothing. And I think about the potential the earning power of the athlete, and I'm glad that she was able to transition successfully mm -hmm. uh, to Bowie State University. Shout out to Bowie State University. Uh, where where she got a scholarship. Yes, she indeed. Get a scholarship. So I was happy about that. Yeah. You know, but I think about any future, um, God forbid, any blackballing, um, but also any of her future earnings and what she's able to do because your silence or your voice, if you will, um, it's, a, it's a shame that Sometimes she's Sometimes silence to, is agreement, you know? right? Oh, totally. People take oh, silence as agreement. Yes. I think that, um, and, and that's one thing that I took away from that scenario as well. There were other... Um, women of color, mm -hmm. black women on the basketball team or trying out for the basketball team. Right. One, kind of when they made the jokes, laughed along with uh -huh. them. Right? Mm -hmm. um, this young lady is the one who spoke up and another young lady mm -hmm. also spoke up and she has since left the school as mm -hmm. well. And the, the girl, I don't know what happened with the girl who was kind of like, oh, tee hee hee when they were mm -hmm. making the jokes. Mm -hmm. But you, you can't. That that I okay. have too much pride in my ethnicity and what, right. what has happened before me to let someone I'm just gonna think that my like, silence is agreement. Like, I'm going to give you an, an opportunity to fix that up. I, yeah, once. Right. <laughs> I'm going to give you one opportunity to fix it. Um, I think on the, on the back end of that mm -hmm. and kind of to wrap that story up in terms of what happened with those girls, um, since she transferred to Bowie State, she played in Summer League and they played this school. During summer league. Wow. And Bowie State was beating this other team by like 20 points. So with a minute left, I guess they called the game or what have you. You know, you you greet the other players. Yeah. Oh, those girls left the left the floor without shaking her and hand. And she can't talk about it? See, that's what right. I'm talking about. Right. So they got her. They got her. Oh, who were her attorneys? Was I think they... I don't who know her, who her attorneys who was, were. I don't know. I actually had some lying sisters that could have helped her out. I had some girls <laughs> that could have helped the girlfriend out, right? She was in Fredericksburg, oh, and her mom consulted goodness. a civil rights attorney um, from the area. So sometimes, though, you can't go local, right? Sometimes no. you have to know that your case is bigger Honey, than that, had, right? Who was, uh, I'm not going to name any names, but yeah, she shouldn't. Yeah. You know. <laughs> uh, so, yeah, so that's unfortunate, and um, hopefully... At some point in time, she can. But we have to, yeah, we have to definitely feel like empowered to yeah. use our voice. And I, what I, I'm not, you know, she used her voice, right? She did. She, it wasn't. I mean, maybe she didn't go as far as some of us would have liked. But I'm proud like, that she stood up. She's money. a young woman. Keep the money. Who, I need my voice. Yeah, yeah. She's she's a young woman that didn't let 
um, this go unchecked. Right. Absolutely. True. She didn't let it go unchecked. True. True. And that school actually had other previous cases or previous incidents mm. um, that they had been called out for. Oh, so wow. they were not unaware that they had issues with oh, managing um, and, and Shame eradicating racism. One Shame. of the pieces of the settlement, though, was also that they needed to have sensitivity training. Sensitivity, sensitivity. You, you know you were wrong for saying what you <laughs> I said. I don't even know what sensitivity, sensitivity training, training will do at that point. Um, yeah, it trains people not to be vocal maybe about it, but it, it will change no feelings. I don't believe that sensitivity right. training will change feelings. But. And you know, it's sad, but uh, if they had any real intention, and I don't know if they do or not, but I think what helps people with these kinds of things are to spend time with people who Absolutely. you don't look like, you know, and spend some significant time, whether that be um, switching, like for instance, our pastor, uh, my pastor um, has been very active with uh, changing pulpits. So mm -hmm. for the rest of the week, I go to a predominantly African-American church, mega mm -hmm. church. And anyways, our pastor is very adamant about um, having, um, congregations kind of look like what heaven would look like, you know, so there's no black or white or anything like that. So he does from time to time, he has different pastor friends and, and what have you. And he's kind of really big, right? Yeah. And so then he'll go to their church right. and vice versa. Right. And it's a beautiful thing. Mm -hmm. You know, really, I think so. When we you know somebody that exposure. and spend time with people, the chances are that you're not going to be as ignorant as you were before mm -hmm. because you spend time with them and you, you learn things, things about them. They learn things about you. Oh, big time. I just think that, yeah. You learn things about each other. Oh, I think totally. that sometimes, though, as we're learning those things, mm -hmm. our ignorance still slips out because we let it be known. I didn't know that you could do such and such right. or that black people True. were like this or right. white people were like this. So, you know, find a safe space. True. 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 <laughs> our next and our last uh, topic for uh, today. And... Um, Guys, if you have any questions, feel free. And even if you have questions, please feel free to leave them in the comment section. And we'll do our best uh, to answer those as well. Um, I'm not sure if you uh, read much about this, guys. But I thought this was pretty inter interesting, right? Uncle Steve. That's our favorite. I know, right? I you that. leave. Listen, <laughs> I'm not going to abandon Steve Harvey, guys. I, I like Steve him. Harvey. Uh, Mess with know, my Uncle Steve. I like Steve Harvey. That's my Uncle Steve. <laughs> That's uh, y'all. Y'all leave him alone. That's Sade's Uncle yeah, Steve. Yeah, he is. That's right. <laughs> and uh, but his dear, dear ex-wife. Mm -hmm. Um, second. Oh, that's the second wife? That's the oh, second Oh, right. Wife. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. But it it's is his ex-wife. Right. The current one is third wife. But yeah. Yes. So his second wife. So that's context, people. He's not yeah. my Uncle Steve. Go ahead. Or relationship you, coach. You, you, <laughs> leave him alone. <laughs> leave him alone. <laughs> okay. Yeah, I say we Him, Obama. I like him. You leave, leave him alone. <laughs> <laughs> but he can't tell me nothing. I feel you. I feel you on that. But, I, you know, this this is the reason why I'm not going to ban Steve Harvey. No, 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 no. Yeah. Because, you know, I have listened to him in a car, and I have just been cracking up laughing. He's given and me so much laughter. And that's what I appreciate him for. Yeah. Um, over the years, mm -hmm. you know. So Absolutely. I, I give you that. Brings. Yeah, he yeah. has. Um, <laughs> so his second wife uh, apparently has been on YouTube again. I didn't watch the video, but yeah, I read I watched the article it. Okay. and set it up. Well, you set it up because you may have watched the video, but yeah, when I, I read, I didn't get all the flavor okay. from her words. I kind of was like, what? Right. Is right. she for real? Right, right, but right, right. <laughs> well, um, in the video, apparently she is saying that she was served um, some type of either gag order or something, and uh, that when she went to go to the courthouse to get it, that the court, uh, I guess, put her out and she was not able to even receive the document or read the document and it does not know what the document has in it. Um, but I found something very interesting though. Mm -hmm. The person that was taping her was kind of like the wingman. So here That's I am. her boyfriend? No, it was like a girlfriend or whatever. Oh, okay, okay. So let's say it's you and me, right? We go down mm -hmm. to the sandwich shop and I'm like, I'm taping you. Yeah, Aya, you know, that sandwich wasn't right, right? You know, and you're like, oh, yeah. so she's I'm, eating. Yeah. She's kind of yeah. uh, instigating. Yeah. In and that table. sandwich wasn't right and, and uh, you know, they were slow in line right, and all that. Right. And you're like, yeah. Right. Co-signing. Right. Yeah. So I'm, you know, the, but I'm behind the camera. Yeah. Okay. And so anyway, so um, the former Miss Harvey, in fact, I think she's still Miss Harvey. Is saying, yeah, you know, uh, when I had money, this, that, and the third, people would call me. Oh my! <laughs> <laughs> Maybe they didn't hear it. <laughs> I don't know. This is live. It's all good. 
And so she's saying, yeah, you know, when I had money, people were always calling me up, this, that, and the third. And now that I'm broke, this, and what have you, my phone will stop ringing, and it's really, it really hurts me. Um, I'm like, you need to work. You need to get a job. Yeah. And, you know, and I'm, it's like she's exposing Steve Harvey. Listen. Um, Steve Harvey is not thinking about No. Her. And this is the thing about people you have to accept, and I've learned to do this. And it's a process, guys. I'm still learning this. You have to accept people for who they are. Mm-hmm. You know, uh, mm -hmm. I, I like Trevor Noah, for instance. There's some things that Trevor Noah has said um, while doing stand-up that rubbed me the wrong way. Mm -hmm. You know, he's this South African comedian uh, being critical right. of African Americans. I took it some kind of way at first. But you know what? I think he's smart. Right. I think he's funny. And I think that sometimes it's good to hear somewhat of an objective opinion. Yeah. I mean, I... We can't I mean, I get, appreciate it all, yeah. but you got to lighten up a little bit. Yeah, absolutely. So, I like Trevor Noah. i got to accept those things that I find a little bit, like, did he just say that? Right. With everything else that absolutely. he says. You know, you got to accept right. the whole person. Steve Harvey has been married three times. It is what it is. It is. Right. And so, but I can appreciate... Is, she... Oh, my gosh. I don't know that she's playing with a 4-1. I mean, what What's I read, there? she said that Steve Harvey is still married to her because the divorce could not be finalized because as part of finalizing their divorce, they needed to have um, division of assets, and they've not divided Honey, the assets. And I'm like, well, let you it got go what right, you're going to get. Let it go. Write a book. So, do you cook? Do you sew? Do something. That's Write one. a book about that. You want to be Miss Harvey? Well, you're not taking Miss Harvey anymore. Go write you a book to keep you moving. Yeah. I mean, and not a tell-all book. I'm talking about cookbook. Uh, do you sew? Do you design clothing? So. Do something. <laughs> I mean, do you decorate homes? Right. Find, do you like to garden or plant? Because I don't how long are you going to talk about Steve this man? Harvey. Yeah, Steve Harvey has moved on. He's moved on. on. He is and whether his new wife on. was his whatever and all that, I mean, I just think that sometimes we can be so... I don't know. I just think sometimes you have to move on. Yeah, I mean, she's basically... Not productive. Accusing him of being what a bigamist? If you're married to just two let it people, go. is that bigamy? Yeah. I'm yeah. like, who cares then? And I, that, I, I really problem. find that hard to believe. Like, I just see her searching. I see her flailing. I see her just saying, "Look at me, look at me." I'm still what trying to. World? I'm trying to extend my 15 minutes. And right. I, I think that, like you said, she's doing herself a disservice. Right. That's when I part. read the comment, not the comment, but when I read the summary of the article, I didn't think. I really thought that she was dealing with some mental issues. So <laughs> that's what I thought. I could be wrong yeah. because, like I said, I didn't read the, I didn't look at the video. But if she's going around accusing him of still being married to her, come I on. I mean, why do you want to have any connection to him? If he's such a bad person, move on and yeah. let it go. Yeah. I mean, to carry that kind of weight around. I mean, at some point in time. I mean, let's be real. Let's be real. Since she still has the name, mm -hmm. right? And, uh, you know, Amy very much still has a strong brand. The Trump meeting, I, you know, that that was, I, I don't know what that was about. I just, okay. I, I wish he would have not. You leave Uncle Steve alone. <laughs> Everybody you know, that walked I through those doors, I wish he would not have done that. Beside, because I don't think that Trump was sincere. Absolutely, you know? he wasn't sincere. And then when Steve came down to the lobby, he looked like a deer caught in headlights. Okay. I think Steve thought he was going to be able to go out the back door. And okay. Trump was like, oh, no, nah, you coming okay. to this lobby. Okay. We will, this is a photo op for okay. me, bro. Okay, gotcha. I feel you. And, okay. you know, I I don't know. Right. No, I totally agree. You know. Uh, that wasn't well thought no, out. No, it wasn't. Stephen A. Smith had a video. Um, Stephen A., he's all right. He's fine. It's You know, it's all good. But... Anyway, Stephen A. had a video, and he was talking about how those of us who were upset with uh, the likes of Steve Harvey, who went to uh, the Trump Tower, shouldn't be upset. Because why? We should have a seat at the table. While I agree with that notion, I don't believe Trump had him at the table. That was a photo op. Now, if That's Trump is serious, say, you have to know when the table is totally. being set. Because that wasn't that was the table. table. That wasn't the That's table. That's a photo op. That, that was, was more about him. I think, I mean, there were a couple of people that kind of fell hard around the time of the inauguration. Mm -hmm. Chris Pat Michelle, who had wow. felt the need to go sing wow. and, and perform at the inauguration. Wow. And she wow. she made, I think, a similar comment, which is, you know, you know, you can't advocate on behalf right. of the community if you're not at the table. And it's like... He wasn't trying to do anything, Chris though. Chris 
You were asked no. to sing, man. It was sincere. Right, absolutely. But, but you were asked to sing. Did you think he was going to come by and say, so now can I get your thoughts on X, Y, and Z? Gotcha. There was never right. going to be that opportunity. You were right. there as a performer. A prop. Yes. And in fact, absolutely. from what I understand, he had to be, let's say, encouraged, greatly encouraged to have these celebrities there. Um, you know, I've heard the term B-list, and I think that they're all A-list. I love everybody. I happen to be fans of those, um, you know, performers, mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. personally. Um, but I don't know how sincere the request was. And I think that there's so many times, I know I have been invited places, and I get there, and the request that I thought was made to me, turns out that it wasn't that way at all. Mm -hmm. And it was not really a sincere attempt at breaking bread with me. In fact, it was quite the opposite. It was one to perhaps expose, in their minds, expose, well, let's see what Shade thinks about mm -hmm. something or what have you. So and basically, it wasn't get your opinion for free. Or pick my brain. Yeah. Or see what I didn't know or what right. I did know. But that this whole notion of let's come together, let's break bread, let's, you know, exchange Collaborate. Ideas. Yeah. No, it wasn't anything like that before. Right. So I think that if the request was not sincere or authentic, then it wasn't worth it. And it was not what it said, you know, is what it said to, to be. So this, well, you got to be at the table. That was no dag on table. No. That, that was, was coming I need down some here. people of color to be at this event. Absolutely. You are a person I of color. I have no idea. <laughs> Can you be what there? this? I'm like, does the man have secret tapes on you? Because why are y'all showing up down yeah. here in this hallway taking pictures with yeah. this man? It's, it's a mess. You know, so, so other than that piece, okay, and that was a very significant piece, I will say. Um, I just feel like, you know, Steve Harvey is who he is. You know, we all know that he's been married numerous of times. And, um, the book, the movie, I think they're funny. I think they're light. And, yeah. um, and, you know, I have no problem with them. Yeah, I mean, no the movie, I enjoyed, you talking about Think Like a Man? Uh-huh. That was, a, I enjoyed yeah, the movie. Good. I love it. was to see great entertainment. Actors of color be on the big screen. Absolutely. I'm not mad at him Working. for that at all. I, I'm actually, I'm not mad at him for that at mm -hmm. all. Um, He's an entertainer. And mm -hmm. when people try Jesus. to elevate him to the status of something else is okay. when I'm kind of like, well, not for me. Okay. You know what I mean? But if if he's dropping pearls and wisdom sure. in your life and it's working, then go Absolutely. roll with it. And I do appreciate what he does with his academy. His Absolutely. Academy. He gives back. He that. and his yeah. wife um, are doing great things in the community. Absolutely. His daughter is also active in the organization. Yeah. Uh -huh. I, I, you know, I like Steve Harvey. I'm not saying I don't like sure, him. I, sure. I really do That's like right. him. I just think Steve, I that him alone. I do just think he that tried. we try to give him a title, <laughs> right? And and maybe it's because we're always searching for some leadership in our right. community. That's we're true. giving him and put him on this platform sure. that I don't know that he's necessarily, you know, deserving of or even qualified for. Forget deserving, sure. right? Qualified. So well, you know what though? Um, I do understand where you're coming from, right? I would say that the needs in our community, you know, in lots of communities, it's kind of like all hands on deck. I think he makes himself available. And there's a space for him. I appreciate that. There is a oh my space gosh. for him all in that hands all hands on, on deck, deck approach. Absolutely. Um, but and you got to yeah. know the issues. You have to be well, much more knowledgeable about the issues and, you know, the levers that right. we should pull to right. improve things. That's true. You know, That's just true. because you have a lot of money in a checkbook doesn't make you qualified to speak on certain things. And I think, you know. Yeah. You know, I think for Steve, um, a lot of the criticism that he received after his meeting with Trump, um, he said it hurt him. And I think for, first of all, I think... Did for, he not expect it? Uh, clearly I don't he did know. not. I, this is what I think about Steve. Clearly he did I not. I think that perhaps he thought that because of his nonprofit work and what have you, that that perhaps is what qualified him to come and speak on behalf, if you will, of the people in, um, you know, in urban communities. And I think that... I think he felt like, well, people are just kind of putting me as just a comedian. And I think that he feel, I think based on what he was sharing on the radio show, that that kind of, you know, bothered him, bothered him a little bit. Like, yeah. you know, we but why can't he partner and, 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 with somebody who yeah. was more well versed in these topics than he? Well, they they weren't invited. See, now here's another thing, and that's fair. And so also but Trump as well. Can you also then say I'm actually not qualified? You should be talking about that. That's true. I don't know about, about, that. That's you I don't know about that. Trump. But no, I, it's when I say that because, um, or can I, I bring so and so, my partner? I don't who knows. know about that. I think you could. I mean, it depends. I mean, that, 
that to me then says whether yeah. he's sincere about wanting to True. know. But if he's yeah. sincere, he shouldn't be offended that you want to bring somebody who you say helped right. inform and sure. teach you. Maybe somebody that's mm-hmm. involved with his philanthropic company. Yeah, that's what saying. I mean. Right. That's what I mean. Yeah. Right. I'm not saying a random. I'm not saying. No, no, no. I'm you know. Saying, right. I mean, but I think that for Trump, uh, and by no means am I ever going to say anything that even remotely sounds like I'm trying to defend him because I'm not. I'm just trying to explain. Hopefully, the mentality, I don't know if there's a mentality there, bless his heart. Um, but it's like entertainer to entertainer. Like, this is the, the, the realm he thinks on in general. No, he was you know not I mean? ready back then. I don't and, think that and he And now, really, today, yeah. 100 days in, oh, he will probably do something different. I right. would hope. Because, I mean, you know, there were no uh, legislators or community organizers or people that could actually do something. I mean, now Steve Harvey can do a lot in the same, but in terms of actually making like and that is actually decisions my point. and all the, that exactly. Is exactly my point. Is and you he did that. To bringing Harvey. Ray Lewis right. and Jim Brown and to, you know, greater extent um, Martin Luther King III. And I don't know why he went down there. I'm like, now dude, now you totally are co-signing on this mess mm-hmm. with yourself and down here. What Jay-Z are you doing? had a line in the song, they think that blacks are only, what, about sports and entertainment. And that pretty much Absolutely. was how Trump wanted to approach it. Yeah, and people felt there, there were a lot of center. other people that he could have, if he was oh, genuine sure. about well, wanting the to know how to exactly. And, and that was all said back then. Corey so we don't have to rehash it, but Absolutely. I definitely agree that when he is sincere, he will talk to people who know about how. That's to, true, right? That's true. <laughs> when That's he's true. sincere, he'll talk to the right people. The right people will oh, find he him. Talk to Ben Carson. When he's sincere. He will talk to the right people. <laughs> and I'm going to say that again. <laughs> ah, when he is sincere. <laughs> talk to Ben Carson. Okay. Well, that's the wrap. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> so, guys, uh, again, thank you for uh, joining us here on The Wrap. And we, we'll be back uh, very soon uh, just to kind of share with you all the week's trending topics. Uh, and, um, you know, we look forward to chiming in. With you guys, and so until next time. Oh, Aya, what are you guys doing, Boss Chicks? Uh, Boss Chicks, mm-hmm. so we recently wrapped um, a 31-day challenge, uh, but we are about to give you a series on mm. travel options for this coming summer. So check us out. We'll have a, I think it's going to be a three-part series where we give you some options on where you can travel this summer at a couple of price points. So. Okay. Get ready to travel. Okay. And how can folks find out more about the Boss Chicks? Um, come to www.bosschicksnetwork.com. Um, and that's where you'll see the latest and greatest that we're talking about over there. Okay. Awesome. Um, and guys, as always, you know, you guys uh, you can check back here on the Gum Network. We have Up Already. We have Culture, our video magazine, as well as The Quest, which is a genealogy uh, podcast and show about two women, uh, different races who cross paths uh, through DNA. Wow. And they go and research their collective past and they visit Lynchburg, Virginia and they find out more about their African American roots. That's pretty exciting. So we have lots of things coming up with the Gum Network. Personally, me, I have a five week challenge coming up. Uh, you guys can visit Shade Dennis Media to see that. In fact, well, that'll be up in a couple of days. So you guys check back. But we're really excited about all that we're doing here on the Gum Network. So please. Go and take a look at some of the um, video style view live. Mm-hmm. Can't wait to, to do that again. So yeah, so there'll absolutely. Be some stuff coming up, but I think towards the end of the summer. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So we're excited about that. Well, guys, again, thank you for joining us. This has been the Wrap Live, and uh, until next time, we'll see you on the flip side. It's a wrap. <laughs> <laughs>